This is the end of our session here with Kevin, uh, and this is his roadmap to success. Now, Kevin is a Mayday dog. If you're in the Los Angeles area and you are looking for a dog, he's got a great personality. And Natalie and the crew over at Mayday just do such an awesome job of taking dogs out of really terrible situations and finding them really awesome owners. He lives right now a couple blocks away from the beach, so uh, you got a you got a nice buddy. I, I appreciate it. I'm sure I'm sure you appreciate it. All right, so uh, this is his roadmap to success, and uh, I want to just cover some of the topics that we went over in the session. So I, I think in his case, he's a little bit reactive. He's a really, really good dog, but he's a little bit reactive to some dogs he meets on walks. And I think it's as a result of him thinking that he is responsible for his humans in some capacity. And so uh, I think a lot of this is a result of not having a lot of rules and structure. And so dogs go through life probing to determine where boundaries and limits are. If we don't consistently correct dogs, that can give them the impression that we are equals. And just like if a husband and wife, it's optional listening to each other. So if he thinks that he has the same status, then he believes that listening to us is optional. And if he thinks he has more status, like he gets to nudge us with his nose when we pet him, then he starts to think, well, I'm responsible for these humans, so I need to be more reactive to dogs we run into on walks because they're not very smart. They might go home with a border collie or something. So. Basically, I think he's thinking he's doing you a service, and so we need to demote him. We're going to do that, achieve that through uh, assigning rules, boundaries, and limits. So one of the rules I suggested would be no furniture. Now, this is an exception because we're filming this video, but I usually suggest no furniture for a minimum of 30 days because it takes a little, about that long for neural pathways to realign. After 30 days, if the problem's still going on, I would continue doing this until the dog no longer displays these behaviors. Then I would allow him on the furniture with an invitation, uh, and only for good behavior. Uh, another rule would be the dog has to sit before we let it in or out of a door. We're in the little courtyard here. He doesn't spend a lot of time in here, but this would be a great place to start it with him out here wanting to come inside. He's small enough to sit on the steps. Um, remember, tell him to sit once. If he doesn't sit, then we walk away, wait one minute, preferably sitting right behind the glass there so he can see us. And don't and ignore him if he scratches the door or whimpers. Wait one minute. And if he is whimpering, wait at least, after you wait a minute, wait for a pause of at least three seconds before you go to the door. Otherwise, he thinks the scratching is what got me. Uh, the door open. So uh, as soon as he's, his butt hits the ground in a sit, we open that door and let him through. But if he doesn't sit, then I walk away for a minute the first time. Second time, I walk away for two minutes, then for four minutes, then for eight minutes, and keep on doubling the amount of time until he stays seated uh, or he goes and sits at the door. After a while, he'll go and sit at the door as his way of saying, I want to go outside, which would be helpful to let us know that he's got to go to the bathroom. Uh, now, on walks, uh, we're not going to let him mark, so I would suggest that the guardians use a new command word instead of, uh, well, they really hadn't assigned one. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to a designated P area and tell and wait for him to do his business. As soon as he does this one, I'm just going to keep your attention to hold it. Uh, as soon as he starts doing his, uh, his business, we're going to say the word business in a normal tone of voice. Don't say it too excited because you'll stop him from evacuating his bladder. Um, once he says business, once he starts uh, going, you say business. And then as soon as he gets done, for the first week, I would give him five treats in a row. And we're going to split these treats in half because he's a little guy and say business. The second it touches his lips for all five treats. Where I'm going, just what did I just do to get this great reward? And after doing this for a week, then we go to one reward, one treat only, but now we've started to create a positive association with the act of elimination and the command word. Um, let me see, I'd also like to see the guardians petting him with a purpose. Uh, so instead of him uh, being petted for when he nudges or scratches us for attention, we're gonna ask him to sit, sit, and then pet him under his chin and say the word sit, just the word sit. Avoid using the word good dog or good boy. That means everything, so it doesn't mean anything. It, you'll make a lot faster progress if you simply ask the dog, come in, give it the command word of whatever you're doing when you pet it. Remember, anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're rewarding. So if we pet our dog for jumping up on us, we're training the dog to jump up on us. Instead, ask him when he nudges us, we tell him to sit, sit, and then we reward him for sitting. Um, if we just want to pet him just for no reason, tell him to sit. If he's already sitting, ask him to come sit over here or ask him to lie down. Um, after a while, he'll start prepaying for attention. Now, we'd also like to do what uh, I like. That's kind of cute with the paw there. Normally, I wouldn't uh, allow that, but it makes good footage. Um, uh, the other thing we want to do is uh, use passive training. So every time he comes to us, we're going to pet him and we're going to say the word here. I recommend the guardians change the word to here from come because we've been using the word come, and if you use a word a lot over and over, it desensitizes the dog and he stops listening for that command word. So using a word like here, it's more distinctive. It doesn't have the baggage of the old word. So every time he comes to us on his, on his own, we're going to pet him and say here. Every time he lays down, we're going to pet him and say chill, or whatever the word is the guardians want to use. Every time he sits, we pet him and say sit. 
After a while, he'll start to engage in these behaviors or actions because that's what gets my human's attention. So instead of scratching or barking or nudging, I go and sit to prepay for attention. And for passive training, the more that we do that, then when, the do when I do need to call the dog and I say, here, the dog, oh man, that just means good stuff is about to come. I better go and see what good stuff I'm gonna get. Uh, to make sure that he doesn't have a bad association with his name, I usually suggest my clients come up with a naughty dog name so that you use that name only when he's being naughty. This way, if I call him Rufus, and after a while I say Rufus and he kind of shuts down, then I just throw Rufus away and I start calling him Trump or whatever I want to call him. Um, and then that helps the dog associate. Every time I hear my name, it means something good is about to happen. If I hear Rufus or Trump, I know something bad is going to happen. Trump definitely means something bad is going to happen. <laughs> um, let me see, what else? Um, uh, other rules to incorporate, the dog shouldn't be within seven feet of anyone's eating. Um, uh, we covered the sitting at the door. Also, once we get them to sit at the door, then we want to do the next step, which is to uh, go through the process of reaching for the door and then jiggling the door and then slightly opening it while he's staying in a sit. Now, when you do this, if the door opens inward, make sure he's sitting in a position where the, dog can, uh, the door can open wide without him having to move. You look very good there on the, on the furniture. Enjoy it, buddy. This is the last time for like a month. Um, let me see what else. Um, on the walks, we're going to use the martingale collar. Now, the collar I had here was not the right size for him. It's a martingale collar, also referred to as a no-slip collar. It's basically two loops together. I will avoid, if you're going to get one, uh, from, not from me, don't get one with the chain for the small loop. Try to get it for, you can, but I just prefer for the one that's all webbing. And without a buckle, I want it just to be able to go over his head so we don't have to worry about anything failing on a walk. We're going to add the special twist of the leash. If you forget how to do that, look in the back of my business card and I'm going to give you, it'll have instructions on how to do that. And then uh, we're going to go through the four rules for a structure walk. Rule number one, stay in your position. So his position is on the right side. His front shoulder should be aligned with my hip. If he starts moving in front, I'm going to pull, I'm going to, uh, the correction should be pull up. But if we let him get too far in front, even if we try to pull up, we're still pulling back and that creates a pull forward motion for a dog. So remember, it's a quick pull, tug or pop and then relax that leash immediately. There should be no tension on your leash. That's the second rule. Keep your arm nice and relaxed. Rule number three, no stopping and sniffing. Now he can sniff as long as he goes, but if he stops to sniff and I stop, then he controlled the walk. Now we would, if he's being good on the walk, you might want to like for the last quarter of the walk, let him walk around and sniff after he's earned it. So if you eat your meat, you get a little dessert, dessert in this case, being allowing to sniff. Now a structured walk is not an everyday walk. It's initially to teach him how to walk and uh, respect the humans, but it's not the most stimulating walk for a dog. So we want to couple that with some fun walks for the dog, or if we want to burn energy, we wouldn't do a structured walk. We'd let him kind of do his own thing. Um, and then rule number four for a structured walk is no marking on the walk because everything he pees on between his house and the furthest point away that he marks is his territory in his brain and that will make him more reactive to dogs. Also having him next to us as opposed to in front of us will help him be a little bit more uh, sociable and not as reactive to dogs he runs into. Um, I'd also like the guardians to practice a U-turn. So when we're walking down the street, for no, and there's no dogs, there's no construction, there's nothing around, every once in a while I turn, I always turn with the dog on my outside and as soon as I make the turn, I'm going to pull a treat out and have the treat hanging. So as soon as the dog turns, he sees that treat, I'm going to pop the treat in his mouth and say the word turn or you or whatever you want to say. We want to do, and then we're going to take a couple steps that way and then do it again. And then we're going back the original direction. You want to do that a couple times when there's no other dogs around, there's no stimulus, nothing, no reason to react. So he just gets used to doing it. And then when you do get surprised by a dog, you can easily turn him around and he's more than happy to do so. If you do run into a dog that he's really reactive to, you can't get him to focus, which is another exercise I want the guardians to practice. Um, look for a car, a shrub, a house, something to get around to block his field of vision. Don't let him run around. Step on the leash if you have to. Wait for that dog to pass. Wait for him to settle down. And then it would be a good idea to do the focus exercise before you leave that area. Now for the focus exercise, that's where we hold our hands like this. Now because he's a little dog, we're going to try to separate our feet and lower our knees. We'd like the dog to be sitting right here. As soon as he looks up in our face, remember there's a string going from my eyes to the dog's eyes. The first thing I do is I raise it to the string, then I travel down the string, and at the end I dip it down into their mouth and I say the word focus every time it touches his lips. At first it's one second, one second. After the first day or two, then it's one second, two seconds. And eventually it's one second, 20 seconds. You'd like to be there within about a week to 10 days where you're at the 20 second mark. I'd like the guardians to practice the focus exercise at least once a day with each guardian with about 10 to 12 treats each, but the more you practice it, the faster he'll get it. 
Um, also, we worked on his recall exercise to help him come a little bit better. Um, so we changed the word to here, like I mentioned, for passive training. And we're just going to use this motion. Now, when you're doing this, I'm only to side, showing you the side so you can see. Make sure your forearm is parallel with the ground. If the dog comes to me and it doesn't sit, I, and this is the dog's head, I go at an arc over their head. As they track up, they can only track up so far to get more elevation, they put their butt down. As soon as the butt hits the ground, lower it. He'll tilt his, head, tilt his head down. As soon as he licks it off the treat, we're going to say the command word of here and then tickle him under his chin. Sometimes we're not going to give him a treat. So if we incorporate it always using this hand motion, then a tickle at the end, at least he gets some reward. Um, let me see. And if he uh, doesn't come to me, I'm only going to say the command word once. And in general, we don't want to say command words multiple times. So if I say here once and he doesn't, he's still looking at the other person, the other person should cross their arms, look up to the side and remain still and, and motionless. I call this being a bad Mexican soap opera actor, <laughs> but you want to basically become uninteresting for the dog, and the dog's like, but I know you have a treat, well, the other person seems to want to give it to me, and he goes to the other person. Now, it says saying here, 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 what I would do is say here once, if he looks at me, and then looks back at the other person, I'd make a kissing sound, and once he looks, I start lowering it, and just like right there, you get him to come to you, raise it again, put him in a sit, and let him... <laughs> Right there, ask him to be allowing to be on here, just trying to be more challenging. Actually, why don't you uh, stand up and let me show you how to do it? Nope. Oh, are you still filming? Yep. Yeah. Cool. So, if he's up here barking, we just probably had a dog walking by, mm -hmm. and he's up here barking, what I'm going to do is put my back to it and walk towards him and make him walk away and claim that area. And we want to do it right away. We want to do it preferably without saying anything. If you notice, I think I clapped. I made a hissing sound. Mm -hmm. the, but if we start, hey, stop it. There's like, yeah, look, she's barking too. Mm. So do it silently, but burn the energy, get up, and move him away from the door. If he continues, move him, in, move him further away, further away, until eventually he's so far away or the other stimulus has gone by, he's no longer reacting to it. Um, let me see, what else? Are you going to sit down? Let's grab our seats again. Um, come here, buddy. All right, he's like, no, don't put your hands on me. Um, how about if I pull out one of these? I bet you come over here for one of these. Yeah, look at that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with bribing your dog with a treat um, initially just to get him used to what you're doing. Uh, and the last thing I want to go over is just really remember, uh, this is like uh, I kind of diagrammed how we can solve a problem. Most people don't actually train their dogs how they want them to behave in a certain situation. And then we get upset when the dog doesn't do what we want them to do, but we haven't actually bothered to teach them. So remember, if we have a dog that's behaving in a way we don't want, how can recreate the situation and play with the elements a little bit. How can we lower the intensity and how we can uh, remove a couple elements, help the dog practice one step at a time, don't move to the next step until it has the first step done. And eventually you'll have a dog that'll be behaving exactly how you want. Um, we just kind of did this with uh, practice dinner. And uh, you know, so there's nothing wrong with actually microwaving a piece of roast beef, sitting at a table, and practicing establishing a boundary around the table. And then once you practice a little bit, then we actually serve the real meal a couple minutes later. You're, during the real meal, we're, we're distracted, we're eating, we're doing our own thing. When we're practicing, we can give them our full attention. All right, buddy, what do you think? Anything, anything left? You want to say, hi, say uh, thank you, Natalie, for getting me an awesome home near the beach? That's what he said. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the roadmap to success for uh, uh, Kevin. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it. We'll see you.